Hey guys, it's Irfan. I'm working on my bike, Honda, 1978 Honda CB125S. I'm doing the tune-up on it, and I wanted to show you a few things. Maybe it might be helpful to people who've got an old bike like this. This bike still has the breaker point system, right, which you have to set the point gap and set the time in. Anytime you change the point gap, you're gonna to have to do the time in as well. So I set my point gap, the, the manual calls for the point gap to be 0.3 to 0.4 millimeter, and the plug gap to be 0.6 to 0.7 millimeter. That's the plug. I took the plug out to make it easier to turn it with the compression. Now I set my uh, point gap to around 0.305 millimeter. And I've got it on the highest point here. So I'll show you. There, see? That's around 0.3 to 0.4. Now, to get this highest point on the cam, right, that's the cam. To get this highest point, what I found out is on the flywheel down here, which is below the engine and on this main body here, if you look closely, you'll see it's got around here, it's got different markings. Now you see this zero right here? I found that that one is where I get the highest point on the, uh, the, the cam and giving me the highest, the biggest opening on the point gap. So what I did, I'm using this here. I got my two ratchet sets. This one here for that which I don't really need and I got this here which this is a ratchet that broke and some of the guys welded it for me so it doesn't ratchet anymore it's it's you know solid this here is uh, wait a minute let me show you this I think it's a 14 millimeter Yeah, this is a 14 millimeter bolt down here. So if you turn this, see how it's stiff there? It doesn't want to turn. That's your, this is your firing mark here. This F, that's the firing mark. This other one is top dead center. So it has to fire here. And if you go around, Again, see here now, we're back 180 degrees to the firing mark on the top dead center again. Now if you notice, it's got a lot of play in it. You see? See how it moves there? That's the true top dead center because if you go around again, I'll show you 180 degrees, you'll also get firing mark you also get the firing mark on the top dead center mark but this is not the true top dead center because it's stiff you see it holds there it wouldn't it wouldn't budge there's no play in it you so if you are on this and it has no play in it you're at a false top dead center you got to go 180 degrees around again until you get that slack. See how slack it is there? That's the true top dead center. And that's the firing mark that you want. So after I've done that, 
after I've set the point gap, the thing to do is to set the timing. Now, I, you got to disconnect this wire here from the coil. Disconnect this wire. And you use a... I used a voltmeter. Regular volt ohm meter with... Uh, give me a minute there. I'll show you. Let me pause this. I used a regular voltmeter with this function, the zero function, so I could hear. I already did it. I'm not going to do it again, but because it's a lot of work. You know, what I wanted to show you is coming up next. After you disconnect this wire here, you go between the ground, any ground, and this wire that's loose, this wire that's now hanging loose. And as you turn, as you turn the flywheel, when it comes up to the firing mark, you'll hear it'll buzz, it'll start buzzing from around here. Then when it reaches the firing mark, it'll stop buzzing. Right? Remember, you have to have this play. You got to have this play or else you're at a false top dead center. Now, what I wanted to show you, which I've never seen anybody do before to set the time in, is to use an active uh, set with the spark plug out. And I'll show you how I do this because this is more exact. You got to have your ignition on plus your kill switch on the handlebar has to be on run. Now pay attention to the, you're gonna listen, hold on a minute. Pay attention and listen to the click on the spark plug when I turn the flywheel. So remember, ignition is on, All right, the ignition switch is on, and the kill switch is on the run. So when I turn the flywheel, As it comes up to the F mark, which is the firing, because you're firing before top dead center, right? This here, this little, this notch is where the F should be when you hear the click on the spark plug. I've never seen anybody do it this way before. And after I, I just found out I could do it this way today, I wanted to make the video to show you guys. So, let's see if you could hear that. All right, so right now, I'm um, over here. The engine turns this way, right? I don't know if you could, oh, I got to ground the spark plug. Hold on a minute. Forgot about that. Okay, I've got my spark plug grounded out there on the engine that completes the circuit. So now pay attention. You're going to have to listen. When, when I rotate this, as this F mark comes up in this groove, you're going to hear the click on the spark plug. Let me just show you that the spark plug is working. I'll just bridge out here. See that? Let me give you some, turn this light out. There. That's the spark plug working. Now, back to the timing. Like I said, when I turn the flywheel, listen for the spark plug as this F comes up on the 
on the mark. I'll see. I need clearance here to. You see? Because of the angle, you think it's firing before the F mark, but that's because of the the uh, the angle of the camera. I have to hold the camera at the side. I'll try to do it on the other side here. Hold on. I know this is a long video, guys, but this has been a you know something that I, I really wanted to share with people and in doing it this way you also verify that your spark plug is working man I can't get a good angle here the focus All right, that's the focus there. It's taking so long for me to do for you. Uh-huh. There, you hear? See that? Right on the F mark. So, I verified that it's firing on the firing mark, which is a little before top dead center, I could verify that my spark plug is good and working. And also the other thing I wanted to show you um, was, heck, this here, got this, and the point gap. Wow, hold on a minute. Oh yes, now I remember what I wanted to show you. On, on this here, right? If you want to adjust the timing, you got to slacken this here and this. You slacken these two and this plate moves like with this here. This is your zero mark. And that's where you could advance and retard the time in. All right, guys. That's what I wanted to show you that I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube how to do your time in. But I found out for myself now. And I'll show you one more thing. If you, you listen to the click for the spark plug, right? When we were at the firing mark on the top that's and you see how I could turn out with my hand now I'll show you it will not spark when you add that false top dead center 180 degrees around so I'll turn it around for you see an arrow there see that arrow that shows you the direction of the engine turning so I'll bring it around here is here we at the We were at the same firing mark and top dead center. But now it's very stiff. It holds, you know, it holds in position. It has no free play. So if you listen, there's no click. There's no spark because that's a false top dead center. That's very important when you're doing your tune up. So I'll bring you back around again. Here, you, you hear that click there? There. That's the spark spark plug sparking. Alright, so I hope this was useful for you guys with the old bikes. Um you know on this here, this felt washer, you see, I had to make this myself from some uh I, one of my previous videos I showed you. Uh, it's still holding up, but I notice I got to oil it up a lot every hundred miles. Oil it up and put some. Uh, I, I got this here. Permatex tune up dielectric grease. That's this. I'm using this as well as regular 
oil. I soak this up with oil and I put the lube, the uh, dielectric grease on the cam because I don't want this thing burning out. It's, you know, it keeps um, getting too much friction. All right, guys, turn my ignition off. That's what I wanted to show you about the bike. If you got any questions, you know, ask me. I'll try to find an answer for you. I hope whoever's got an old bike like this, you keep it going. This is part of our history. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was uh, helpful for you. All right, now, goodbye. Uh, 1978 Honda CB125S. Right now, I just turned over 12,000 miles on it um, this week. Every 500 miles, I do my oil change because it's cheaper, just five quarts, five dollars for a quart, and it's one quart, so it's not much of a big deal. All right, now, bye.